Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're going to be talking about the K70 from Kakuka. And before we get into the review, guys, just want to say thank you so much for supporting this channel. If you guys would continue to do so, liking the video, subscribing to the channel, that would be awesome. We really appreciate it. It goes a long way. First things first, let's talk about the looks. The look section is probably going to be a little bit longer than normal, and that is because one of the main features of this bike is it's a stealth e-bike. Now what they mean when they say that the marketing behind that is, this is supposed to be an e-bike that doesn't necessarily look like it's an e-bike. So if you were to be passed by somebody on the road, you know, flying down the road on this bike, you shouldn't be able to tell that it's an e-bike. That's sort of what the stealth is implying. Now with the K70, there are a few things they did to ensure that or to further along that idea that this is a stealth e-bike and the first one is going to be they have this integrated display right here in the handlebars so unless you're standing right behind the bike you wouldn't be able to tell this is a screen so again it's very discreet it's very discreet we could say now a couple other things that we have are the motor the motor is smaller 250 watts and it's a little bit harder to see so unless you're looking at it from the right angle and you know maybe the bike's not going too fast you could you could look in there and go like oh, okay that's that's a that's a hub motor you know it is small but it's a hub motor but if this thing again is just kind of flying around you might not be able to see that the other thing that adds to the stealth aspect of the bike is up here in the front we do have extra cables that you wouldn't expect on a traditional bike but they immediately go inside the frame and it gives the whole thing a very nice sleek look and hides a lot of those extra wires that you would expect to see on an e-bike so all in all, the impression I get from this is they did a fairly decent job of making this a stealth e-bike. I think it is much harder to tell that this is an electric bike when we look at stuff like uh, Himaway, Cyrusher, other brands that have these big fat tires, 750 watt motors, and other features that lend itself to being spotted as an e-bike right out the bag. Next, let's talk about the motor. The motor we have here is a Zofo. XOFO. I'm not sure if that's a, a brand name or not. It's my first time seeing this. It's 250 watts. And like I mentioned in the ride test, 250 watts is on the low end of wattage when it comes to e-bikes, especially here in, in the US. Now, I'm pretty sure I've seen some stealth e-bikes that have 500 watt motors in them, but 250 watts is something I've seen quite a bit. So the fact that the 250 watt motor is smaller, say than a 500 or 750, that's one of the main reasons that they would choose to go with this design because they're basically they're you know putting themselves in the box of this is a stealth e-bike now everything needs to be as discreet as possible so using the 250 watt motor here i don't think is a huge deal as far as power goes it seemed to be just fine we rode it around you know a couple little hills here and there nothing too extreme and 98 percent of the time you know we're on the the pavement so it's fast rolling as far as what it's supposed to be doing here on this bike i think it did it well and uh, don't have too many complaints about it Next, let's talk about the battery. So the battery we have here is a lithium ion battery. It is a 36 volt, 7.5 amp hours, and we've got a 15 amp controller. Not really designed to, again, push boundaries, super fast, super torquey, none of that stuff. This is something that is designed to be more or less like a road bike. So you'd imagine you'd be pedaling a little bit more. As far as I know, unless there is a maintenance hatch or some way to get the battery out if you needed to you know, do that for some reason, then the battery is not removable. So the battery stays here in the down tube of the frame. We do have a charging port over here on the right hand side. As far as I can tell, the door here clicks in and it hasn't come off in the writing that I was doing. It seems to be fairly waterproof. So all in all, fairly decent design here on this integrated battery. Next, let's talk about the brakes. The brakes we have here are mechanical disc brakes. Now, usually this is something we comment on saying, oh, we, I wish we had hydraulics. For this bike, because it's also fairly light and it's not going super fast, 20 miles an hour sort of being the top speed here, I don't think it's a huge deal. And, you know, the brakes functioned well. I didn't really have to adjust them. I don't think out of the box, we popped on the front tire and everything seemed to be functioning really well. And they stopped the bike when you need to, so no complaints on the disc brakes. Next, let's talk about the gears. We've only got one gear here and that's thanks to this carbon belt that we have. If you live somewhere on the coast near the water like we do here in Houston, you'll know that rust is a pretty big deal when it comes to a lot of these components on bicycles. So the fact that we don't have to worry about the chain, we've got this belt here. It's a nice upgrade in my opinion. Now, normally on these carbon belt bikes, we don't have a way to adjust the tension. However, on the K70, we do have that option back here. We have got this belt tensioner. Well, it's normally a chain tensioner, but it's, you know, 
no chain, so it's a belt tensioner, I guess in this case. As far as how it's geared, I feel like it is not horrible to pedal around without the power, but it is a little bit harder to start out, which means that when you get to the top speed, it's gonna be a very nice cadence and you're not uh, ghost pedaling or anything like that. I felt like they decided to sort of gear it towards that higher end of the speed. And normally, you know, it seems like brands will do it the opposite way. So it was nice to see that when we're getting to the top speed, no ghost pedaling or anything like that. All in all, like the, like the belt drive here. Next, let's talk about the extras. All in all, not really a whole lot of things I would consider to be extras here. We don't have a rack, we don't have fenders, anything like that. What we do have is a front light. Now the front light isn't integrated, so you do have to get extra batteries in order to turn this on, and it has a power button on the top of it to do that. So probably a mark against the K70 thing in this instance is there's not really a whole lot of integration as far as the lighting goes and in the back we don't have a light we do have that rear reflector we've also got this double kickstand here in the middle which i do like it wasn't too hard to get it in and out um, i felt like with some of the bikes some of the cargo bikes we've tested they're a little bit heavier so having that kickstand in the middle can be kind of cumbersome you know you do have to use some strength to sort of do that but because this bike is lighter it wasn't a big deal to have the double kickstand here so all in all you know i i enjoyed it here on the bike next let's talk about the suspension there is no traditional suspension on the bike so you think about it no front fork suspension no rear suspension but the things we do talk about are the tires and the saddle so let's talk about the tires first the tires we have here are average size for being on the road. 700 is the measurement on those bad boys. And nothing really to complain about. They're much different than, you know, the regular sort of like 26 by 4 inch fat tires that, that we use. But it does come with a few extras, mainly being the fact that we've got the sidewall reflective stripes on the whole thing. That's an excellent safety feature to have, especially because we don't have a lot of those integrated lights that we'd like to see. The fact that we do have those sidewall reflective stripes is a nice bonus here. The saddle we have here... Is a little bit thinner, I think, than what I would need for me. Now, as you guys know, when you are looking at saddle, it's all about matching the saddle up to your sit bones. So just because this one was a little bit thinner than I might like, might be perfect for other people. And that's one of those things you really don't know until you get the saddle, test it out, ride around for a little while, but it's a very cheap part of the bike. Meaning that if you got a bike, whether it's this one or, or something else, and you didn't like the saddle, it's a $20 to $40 part that you could go and find something that fits you a little bit better and doesn't break the bank. Now, stylistically, I think the saddle was pretty dope. I mean, it's got sort of this fake leather vibes to it, and then we've got these little silver businesses here in the back. So, all in all, I think the saddle was pretty good. Again, just it was a little bit thin for, for me. Next, let's talk about the controls. The controls here are very simple. We've got a three-button keypad over here on the left-hand side to raise our level of pedal assist, lower our level of pedal assist, turn the bike on and off, and cycle through a few of the different things that we can see here on the display. And the display is actually fairly easy to read. It was a lot brighter, I think, than I anticipated. So I was out riding around, you know, towards the evening. I was out riding around in the morning, in the middle of the day, and you can really see it throughout the entire day. Uh, it's very bright, very easy to uh, to read, so I was pretty impressed with it. Now, it doesn't show us a whole lot. It shows us, you know, our battery readout, shows us our odometer, trip distance, things like that, our speed, obviously. Again, kind of thinking that this is a stealth e-bike, it's discreet. Maybe there's a couple of more features we could cycle through and see here, but I think for this bike, it's not necessarily relevant. Next, let's talk about who this bike might be for. First and foremost, the thing we should talk about is going to be the use case of this bike. This is a bike that it's not very versatile in the different ways that you could use it. This is something that needs to stay on the concrete as flat as you can get it, smooth as you can get it. That's where this bike's really gonna shine. As soon as you start trying to take it, you know, off-roading, even if it's on like gravel dirt paths or things like that, I don't think it would handle that quite as well. Now you probably could do it. I would recommend, you know, going slower, kind of not trying to fly through anything like that. However, if you are looking at this bike, just know that you're gonna be more or less tied to flat, fast rolling concrete. As long as you've got a very good idea of what you'll be using this bike for and if it fits your use case, awesome. Secondly, the next thing to look at would be the size and the fit of the bike. Now, because this is more like a road bike, it's got a much more forward, aggressive riding position. So that's something to be aware of. In conjunction with the forward, more aggressive riding position, you also need to look at the reach and the standover height. And all those measurements can be found in the description below. All right, so we covered the specs on this bike. We talked about the use case. We talked about who it might be for. And now I think it's time to put it to the ride test. So let's head outside and ride around a little bit.
All right, guys, welcome outside for the ride test. Today we are on the K70 by Kakuka. This is a stealth electric bike. And what they mean by stealth and what most people say when they use terms like that is it's supposed to be something that is difficult to spot that it's an electric bike. So if we, you know, take a step back over this way and we just kind of look at it, yeah, there's a few things I think we can point out and go like, oh, that's probably an electric bike. But if you really didn't know and just somebody was just, you know, blowing by you on the on the road it might be hard to tell if this is an electric bike it's got that thicker tube here at the bottom and that is where the battery is housed and we've got a very small motor here in the back 250 watts um, which is pretty much what we see on some of these stealth bikes i think i've seen some with 500 watt motors but generally they like to keep them small again kind of adding to that whole stealth business but other than that i mean the the screen is up here in the handlebars we kind of got this cool unit here and besides this twist throttle which again you wouldn't really be able to see too well and this integrated display here i think they kind of pulled off the the stealth look now people might ask like what's the point of buying an electric bike if you don't want people to know it's an electric bike personally i'm not 100 percent positive why you want to do that i would prefer you know stuff that's bigger faster a little bit more fun but if you are somebody who's looking to have a very discreet electric bike feel then that's that's what they're going for here and it is fairly light too so i mean it was you know normally when we're getting these electric bikes it's you know 65 plus pounds and this isn't even close to that so yeah honestly from first impression it kind of has this cool vibe to it now one of the things you might notice is i've replaced the grip on this side i had a mccaskill grip laying around so i threw that on here because we've got this locking point and the grips aren't well they don't have locking points and they've got this you know cool sort of leather feel to it and it's not horrible and i think aesthetically it's it's fairly close to the saddle so that's cool but we uh i don't know it kind of reminds me of like a small child's baseball glove it's just got all this 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 rubber and this sort of faux leather on the outside and it's got a lot of movement to it so for me the first thing i did was just i you know replaced replaced this side um i'm sure i have a half grip somewhere lying around but today i just threw on this one to do some some riding around so let's go ahead and pop on and do a little riding around on it and so first we'll go ahead and pedal it as if it were not an electric bike see how it's geared and all that stuff how's it going And all in all, not too bad. I mean, a little hard to start out, but kind of going that medium speed, like I'm going now, I feel like this is a pretty decent uh, cadence to pedal at. So yeah, all in all, not, uh, not too bad. You guys know I am a fan of the belt drives, so I like whenever we get one of them bad boys. Let's go ahead and stop and let's turn the bike on. So our business is over here. By business, I mean keypad. And this is the display showing us our speed, our trip distance, our odometer, back to speed. So not a whole lot of information here, but again, it's discreet. It's a discreet bit of information, I guess. So let's go ahead and take off, do a little pedaling. And in pedal assist level one, not really giving us too much. Let's go to pedal assist level two. And three. going to take us up to that 24 25 kilometer mark and we're in pedal assist level four and pedal assist level five Get a little corner in here
So Pelt's is 05, we're getting to that 34 ish kilometers per hour, which I believe is the top speed that is advertised. So that is, uh, that's where we're at. brakes nice easy controlled stop the other thing that's interesting is normally I'm out here riding on bikes with some sort of suspension and if they don't have suspension they've got at least the fat tires this one doesn't even have that so it's a little bit of a different feel I think than most of the bikes that we test and we'll go ahead and just use the throttle on this side But as long as you stay on the pavement, I mean, I really don't, really don't hate it. And the other thing we have too is we've got this safety switch here. So if this isn't pressed in, the throttle doesn't work. So especially having one of these half twist throttles, that is a nice little safety feature to have. Or if you are showing it to somebody for the first time and you know, maybe it's the first time around an electric bike, you can turn that off and that way you avoid getting any sort of like accidental touches or anything like that. So that's that's a nice little safety feature to have here. So just to test it, let's go off-road just a bit back here. Kind of in some soft sand, going over some sticks. A little bit of bumps. I mean, you definitely feel the bumps a little bit more and that's probably the you know the most off-roading you'd want to do on this bike but now we're back to back to business just cruising around now with this 250 watt motor I guess I expected it to be a little bit less I don't know get up and go ish right it's 250 watts and we're used to kicking around on 750s and uh, yeah it's not it's not horrible not horrible. Well guys, we got on the bike, we went around we ran through a couple of the different gearings, the different pedal assist levels, and uh, all in all, I'm fairly uh, fairly impressed by it. Looking at the specs to what it actually feels like riding around is uh, it's pretty nice. All right, guys, that is going to do it for our review of the K70 from Kakuka. If you want to know more about them, I'll have a link to their website down below in the description. And if you guys have any questions for us, please let us know in the comments. We love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.